Hello people, your favorite European PokéTuber here, and today we're going to compare not only the performance, but also the risk associated with ETBs and booster boxes. We're going to compare them, see how they behave, how they have behaved in the past using circle data, and which one performed better, and which one was the riskier. Now, as I said, criteria that we're going to be used in this video are returns and volatility. I'll skip straight to the point as I don't want to waste any of your time, but if you like this type of content, then I recommend the Discord as there is much more. There's the Discord bot available, which if you first time you hear about it, I'll leave you the link popping up right here so you can watch that playlist and get an idea of what the Discord bot is all about, as well as you'll be able to find it in the Discord and so on and so forth. Subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed it, blah, 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 comment. I really like comments actually. I read them all and um, yeah, I like getting feedback, so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. Let's get into the point. So returns and volatility. Now, what is the data pool? So the data, as you can see, has been taken from tissue player. So for all of you Americans, you should be happy. Finally, some American data and uh, it is weekly data and uh, it is one year worth of data. So we have 52 data points. And uh, as you can see, they're going to be for all sword and shield sets both booster boxes and ETB. So for every item, so let's say a Lost Origin ETB, you have 52 data points. Sale prices weekly for a year taken from TCG player. Hope that's clear. Now, get into the first point, returns. So these are percentage returns. These would be the average weekly returns. Now, how were these returns calculated? So here I use the simplest way to calculate returns. Today's price minus yesterday's price over yesterday's price. Where obviously today's and yesterday are equal to a time horizon of one week. So oh, that's clear. These are all percentage based. So simply booster box average return for a sold and shield base set box would be 0.03%. These would be weekly average returns. How was the average calculated? Once again, I used the sample mean. So what is a sample mean? I talked about it uh, quite often in my most recent videos. And uh, it's simply the sum of returns divided by the number of data points. So the sum of weekly returns over 52, which will be as we stated earlier, the number of data points that will be the sample mean um, with uh, using equal weights. So every data point brings the same amount of information as the other same weights. Now, I don't want to get into the specific terms, uh, which if, if you want me to do video more, more specific terms, I'll be happy to do if, if you're new, I'm a mathematician. Uh, so that's why I like this kind of stuff. And um, yeah, if that's something you're interested in, just let me know down in the comments. So that's about it. What can we get from this data? So We'll draw the conclusion later. I there's slides for it. I I prepare all the slides. I'm pretty happy about this PowerPoint. Uh, brings me back to middle school. Uh, but as you can see here, it's very clear that the best performing set only when it comes to returns. So we're not looking at risk. We're only looking at returns. We'll get into the risk part later. Evolving skies, both for booster boxes and ETBs, is the best performing sets when it comes to returns. These are again weekly average returns. It's the best. What's the weakest? So as you can see here, when it comes to booster boxes, darkness ablaze. When it comes for ETBs also, it is darkness ablaze, the weakest performing set. Now I have a pretty interesting video about darkness ablaze, which is uh, last video I updated where uh, I basically, without mentioning anyone, I exposed what a major PokeTuber said about uh, darkness ablaze. I think it was Diva Voltage and Rebel Clash ETBs. Um, and it's a pretty funny video. It's old. Uh, it's like based on a true story. Uh, these things happen. Uh, the video is still up there on YouTube. You can go watch it. Well, it's two years old. And I go over the flaws of that, you know, thinking process, how, why it makes zero sense from a, a statistical, math, more statistical than mathematical. I mean, stats is part of mathematics uh, point of view. So I would, I recommend you go watch it. Uh, it has, it had a very, uh, I mean, People didn't really like it for some reason. Um, I, th I don't know if it, I went too technical on it. I was trying to, I don't want to say educate because I'm not an educator. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a professor. I'm, I'm no one, uh, but more uh, making you aware that all, all the nonsense that is spread um, out there. Anyways, 
That being said, an average return for the product, so booster box and ETBs. Now, forgive me, this you should divide it by 100. So this would be 0.0416%. Same for here, ETBs, 0.0381%. My mistake, uh, so forgive me about that. So here, as you can see, it's clearly that, again, weekly average returns, booster box wins over the trainer boxes. Now, if at this point you're, you're like, Barrett, you said you, you've taken data from TG Player. How can we trust you on that? Uh, so if you know the, if you're aware about the Discord bot, you're aware of what I'm, I'm capable of in terms of, let's say, coding skills, as well as, let's say, let's call this mathematics, even though it's very simple stuff, uh, then you know that I didn't have any problem taking that data, um, let's say, automatically. So what about risk? It's nice to talk about returns. Uh, if, you know, we all like to make big money, we all like to be rich, and I can wait. I just ordered my Lambo. It's out for delivery. As you know, I'm in Italy, so I'm actually going to just pick it up in person uh, next week. Now, jokes apart, we're going to measure risk using volatility. What type of volatility? Well, this would be called historical volatility. In the financial market, just for in parentheses if you're interested, there's two main types of volatility. One is historical and the other one is implied volatility, which comes from options. Now, I won't go over it. If you're interested, just watch any piece, watch or read any piece of financial literature on uh, implied volatility. It's pretty interesting. Um, if you don't care about it, don't, but just be aware that these things exist. So historical volatility, what is? So it's nothing um, but a standard deviation. That's what volatility is all about. It takes the name of volatility when it comes to financial instruments. So if uh, you talk about volatility, you don't know what it is. Usually, intuitively, it is explained as how uh, the price moves. Uh, calculating volatility of, of price is one of the dumbest things. It's not only done in financial um, literature. Uh, nobody looks at price. Usually, they look at returns. As And this is going to be volatility of returns, just like it was the average of returns. We're going to take a look at volatility of returns. Looking at volatility of price, um, yeah, uh, I won't comment. So what is this? So this is a Greek letter, stands for sigma. It's a capital sigma. And uh, it's the sum of what is this? So the volatility of, let's say, the returns for uh, a Evolving Sky booster box would be you have all your data points. So we have 52 data points, right? So we have what it's called usually an array, uh, a vector. Of data points so we have 52 data points so you take the average of the data points so this would be the average of returns this would be this right here x bar will be the average return of an evolving skies booster box right so from the average basically you subtract each data point of obviously we're still talking about evolving skies and booster box you subtract them, you square them. Now, if you write in xi minus the average or write in the average minus xy, once you square them, it doesn't matter. Then you sum it, right? And uh, you take a square root of that, and then here you're dividing by the number of data points minus 1. Why minus 1? It's not important for the sake of this video. I'm sure you already skipped this part, and I bored you too much with my math. So that's how volatility has been calculated. It's nothing but the standard deviation. So it's historical volatility. Obviously, we cannot calculate implied volatility. And though you can make a, I'm ranting here, but uh, mathematical, well, I mean, you can make a case for implied volatility based on something. Uh, you could, you could maybe try to, let's say, create a synthetic uh, volatility. It's possible. Um, I mean, I, I don't see the point. You, you, I mean, maybe there's some point to it. But uh, it's, this is complex uh, math, so pointless even to talk about it. Uh, not because, I, I mean, not trying to offend anyone, obviously. Um, so here, volatility. Once again, this is the standard deviation. So I'll call it standard deviation, call volatility. It's the same thing of both, as you can see here, booster boxes and ETBs. So what can we take from it? So here, it's easy to see that the lowest deviation, so the lowest risk, because we decided, right, that we wanted to measure risk as volatility, which is what we, your uh, average financial advisor would do, uh, which I'm not. I'm just a guy. Don't take this as not financial advice. Uh, don't get me to, uh, behind bars. So Rebel Clash, when it comes to booster boxes, as the lower 
risk, lowest, lowest standard deviation. When it comes to ETBs, as you can see here, it is once again, Rebel Clash being the most stable. So if you don't care about the terms, if you only care about risk, Rebel Clash is the one with the lower risk, the finer risk as we just did with volatility, I'll say the oblivion. Now, what can we get from here? And this is not the end of the video, there's more. So all sets, but Darkness to Blaze at lower volatility for ADBs versus booster boxes. All sets, but Darkness to Blaze at higher returns for booster boxes. So what does it mean? I just realized that I misspelled Darkness to Blaze. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> it happens, uh, but it means that if we don't consider returns, but we only consider risk, then when it comes to ETBs, ETBs will carry the lowest risk, meaning risk as we defined volatility, standard deviation. I'll say it again. If you couldn't care less about returns, if you only care about risk, which is in finance, it's an arguable thing to do, uh, you almost never do it, uh, then ETB will, based on this historical data, and we'll get uh, about the how we can take this data and project into the future. Spoiler, it's pointless. It's nearly pointless, uh, but still watch till the end of the video. Uh, but um, ETBs will carry less risk than booster boxes. Now, all sets but Arctic Blaze had higher returns for booster boxes. What does it mean? If you couldn't, it's the opposite. It's if you couldn't care less about risk. If you all, if you're an evil investor, you only like returns. I don't want risk. I'm fine to for Pokemon to go to zero. I can uh, mortgage my house. Don't do it. And buy booster boxes. Then for this piece of data, booster boxes will carry the higher returns if we don't take a look at risk. Now, the question is, okay, Barry. So. What do you do with it? Well, as I just said, not consider risk, booster boxes have had the better returns. Not consider returns, ETBs provide lower volatility, aka lower risk. Okay, so what what, what do I do with it? Well, it's not over. Obviously, you heard many times risk to reward. Okay, let's do it. Let's measure risk to reward. Now, a disclaimer. So these numbers should be divided by 100, both. Uh, so this would be 0 0.0328, same for this, 0 0.0162. So if we take a look at booster boxes, this return to, to volatility ratio. So basically, this is uh, a variant of the Sharpe ratio. If you are in finance, you might have heard about the Sharpe ratio. Sharpe ratio, what does it measure? It measure the excess risk. What's excess risk? It's a risk of your asset, your portfolio, your asset, whatever you want, minus the risk-free rate, access risk, over volatility of that portfolio, right? So here I'm not calculating the risk-free ratio. Uh, it's balanced for the sake of this video, obviously. So it's kind of a modified sharp ratio. So we're comparing return to volatility. What does it mean? So we're saying, okay, if I have um, X return, but what is the amount of risk I'm carrying? to obtain that return. If a short and steel booster box will perform 0.0328% per week, what is the risk associated with that return? So by dividing by the risk, we're basically getting, okay, that's a ratio. We want the highest ratio possible to get the better return over risk, right? So based on that, as you can see, interesting enough, Bifid Voltage will provide you, funny enough, with the better risk to return or return to risk. So this is the highest number possible, which is what we want. We want to maximize risk. I mean, we're mathematically wise. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm picky. Um, I, I care about this stuff. Mathematically wise, we're not maximizing risk and minimizing return. We're not doing that. You can do that. It's much more complicated. The math involved, it's not simple. I, I mean, and I'm not saying I can't do it. It's part of my thesis. Uh, for my degree, but uh, it's it's not what we're doing. So basically, what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, if we want to compare return to volatility, with voltage historically with, again, this data point uh, that we used will provide you, as provided, no will, sorry, has provided the better 
return or your risk. When it comes to late trainer boxes, as you can see here, the highest number is Silver Tempest. Silver Tempest would have provided you with the highest return over risk. That's what's up. Now, as a summary, the average return over risk ratio for booster boxes is 2.144. So how it, how it compares to the average return to volatility ratio for ETBs, 1.93. What does it mean? It means that based on this historical data, booster boxes not only outperform because based on returns, if we go back here, remember, based on returns, right, only returns, booster boxes outperform ETBs weekly, right, over a year. Weekly returns, a year of data. Here we're saying, if we also take risk into the equation, then booster boxes once again outperform using this metric. So they were the ones that provided we had the higher return taking that a certain level of risk, right? So basically, based on this data point, what does it mean? It means that historically, booster boxes have performed better in using all the metrics that we use, so returns and return to volatility ratio. The only downside was risk. So summing up, what happened was ETBs have provided us with the lowest volatility, the lowest risk, not considering returns. Booster boxes have provided us the lowest returns, not considering risk. Booster boxes have provided us with the highest return once we consider risk. So based on historical data, booster boxes seem the way to go. However, with this data, where should we park our money? Why did I spell or? It's R. Sorry about that. Where should we park our money? Better. What do we do? And my answer is, I'm not a financial advisor. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.